Do you think you can grow this in pots inside? I think so. I'm going to try it. So you had sent me that video. And what's crazy is shortly after that, there's a guy on Instagram that I follow, and he did the same thing indoors. But the guy I sent you was either in New Zealand or Australia or something. Yeah. So he's got a different growing season. Yeah. But um, if not, then certainly a grow light. Uh, but I would, I would imagine in a sunny window. And then I also follow Whispering Willow Farms on YouTube, and she has in her hoop house a whole bed of ginger, and it is, it's, 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 it's amazing. And, and she's so, showing you the harvesting like he did. Mm -hmm. Well. Not he his was more instructional, like step one. But I like seeing the harvest yes. scene and seeing all those yes. roots under there. Yes. So she did show that part. You know, she pulled some up and had ginger. But um, but yeah. So um, I pulled this together because I want to do your tiger water. Okay. Check. Which do I get? Do I get like the accolades for naming it tiger water? I mean, really, you can take them. <laughs> Um, okay, so what? Well, you can slice it thin, or you can use a grater. Have you got a grater? A grater. Uh, uh, well, I just feel like when you grate, it's real fast and easy, and it also I feel like um, more sides of the ginger are exposed to the water. Okay. So this is a lot, unless you're making a ton. Um, I just I, that's just what I have. Okay, so, so maybe. So the most important thing is not to do your fingers. Oh, so you use the face side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it gets so I don't I, it gets all stuck up in there. Okay. So this is really like slicing very fine, mm -hmm. but I think it just comes out of the grater better. Yeah. I hate I don't use that other side at all. I mean, if you wanted to go more fine, you could. Yeah, I use that for my parmesan. Yeah. For chocolate. Well, you know, to me, everything I do is pragmatic. Okay, this will work. This will work even better, but this will work and it's easier. You yeah. know, so that type of that type of consideration is. And you try things. I love trying things and, and seeing how it works. I just feel like compared to slicing, this gives you more exposure of your ginger to the water. It smells good. <laughs> it smells really good. So do you have any idea how hot that jalapeno is? Um, they're from my garden, um, and okay. they are hot, hot, but not crazy hot. So have you got a big? Um, so I need pot. a sauce pot. I would go big with the amount of ginger we're doing, and then also oh. make another. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. Um, your filtered water in there. Okay, how much? Like as much as it will handle, pretty much. Okay. Oh, I'm going to put all of this, which is a okay. lot. Is this going to be enough water? Because I need to Well, see, breaking. what's going to happen? I would get more, okay. but what's going to happen also is this will be quite strong, and you can like, dilute it later. Okay. Like so, you can you're diluting it by adding a lot of water now. Okay. But you're diluting it later as well. Okay. So all right. I'm going to get water. This okay. what? Is but it's very water. flexible, is what I'm saying. Yeah. You don't have to be worried about specific amounts. So how hot do you want it to be? Um, probably not too hot. I'm going to try to convince. Or yeah, a quarter. I don't know. What did you do at the base? Well, see, I, it was a very hot pepper. I only used three slices. Okay. I mean, it, and I, everyone's definition of hot is slightly different. Yeah. You don't do the seeds, though, do you? I'm not everything. Oh, you Should I taste it? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> not too hot okay. but it might grow <laughs> it might grow on you huh? the heat you know how heat heat grows all right so no <coughs> but I'm telling you if you have a cold eat a slice okay a slice of jalapeno who do you want to have this that's well I are you not hot well I want Scott I, I actually, I'm trying to get all my kids, Scott 
Yeah, my kids don't necessarily. Okay, we'll just do that. One, two, three, four, five, kids. six, seven. You just want them to like what's good for them. Yes, that's. And that's what we found in the we're doing. Should I cover it? Yes. Okay. Um, you, the reason you cover it is just to keep the the most moisture in. Like right. when you uncover something, you're trying to boil the liquid away. But right. we want to save all the liquid. So I mean, it's okay to not be uncovered. Not be covered part of the time, but right. mainly we're trying to conserve the liquid here. Okay. So it's quite breathtaking because I have done this work. Yeah. So I know what's involved. Is this tatting or crochet? So this part is definitely crochet. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it could be all crochet, but it's so fine. I, I isn't it gorgeous. Yeah, and I fold it in half. Yeah, I know. I it, love it. It really does take my breath away. Yeah. I, I did some of this kind of work, but never so fine. My grandma Jones, my dad's mother, she was into a lot of the tatting and the and the lace crocheting and sewing and quilting. And All so, things to keep women busy at home. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, it's, I have a couple of her blankets. Um, an apron that she had made and so anyway so yeah so this stuff always reminds me of my grandma so I want y'all to interested how uh, you edit. I know I know so um, so I want y'all to meet my friend Becky Hastings um, we met through church um, and what's crazy is during the epidemic no the pandemic no the crazy demic the crazy demic the stupid demic um, uh, we had recently moved out here and we were looking for a church and everything was online, and I stumbled upon um, Pastor Hastings at Becky Hastings Church, which was Mountain View, Mountain Lakes, Mountain Lakes, and it was in a high school is where they met. Well, I loved what I saw online, and so we were really excited to, to go there because that's where we had decided. Well, with the crazy demic. Um, they were never able to reopen. So we found this other church. Because the high school couldn't have anybody meeting there. Right, right. But the ch there was a church close to us, the Carpenter's Church, and they were still meeting during the pandemic. And I was sitting there and I saw this man come and walk in front of me. And we had just moved here, so I didn't know a lot of people. Do you know this story? Yeah, yeah, more or less. So I'm looking at him like, man, I know this guy from somewhere. And I knew it wasn't real estate because that's what I, I was doing um, at the time. And I could not quite put my finger on it. And then I heard his voice. And it clicked that that actually was Pastor Hastings at Mountain Lakes Church that was online that I really loved. And they are friends with our current pastors and so they started coming and meeting and fellowshipping and worshiping at the carpenters and um it was awesome for me because i got like the best of both worlds because and then becky she is it's not a you don't have a doctorate <laughs> But tell tell us a little bit about your background. But to me, she should have her doctorate. Um, I didn't even finish college, but I have a, a hunger to learn things. Mm -hmm. So I learn what I'm interested in, and I'm interested in health, mm -hmm. and I'm interested in uh, longevity and not being healthy till you die. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, there's no point in longevity if you're suffering mm -hmm. or if you know, you haven't maintained your health so that you can't enjoy the life that, that our modern system is able to give us. So I'm just, I just pursue information and crazy of what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. So that's why I couldn't have a PhD because <laughs> you have to focus more and you also have to regurgitate what someone else is leading you to. And I just feel like God leads me to information mm -hmm. as and when I need it. And, and I love helping people too who are interested mm -hmm. In, in pursuing the same things. And tell us about your website. Well, I started my website, I think in 2013, because I just wanted a way to share what I was learning. And it's called journeyboost.com. And I don't know if I'm put together. So what I like to do is research a topic a lot and then collect the information 
and put it together so that when I'm talking to someone and they're interested in something, I could say, oh, I've compiled a lot of stuff about that. You can go here. For instance, one very popular one, actually, uh, the most popular one is what to do if CPS shows up at your door. Oh. Isn't that interesting? I mean, that one's had... CPS as in Child, Child Protective, Protective Services. Services. Wow. So, so how I wrote that one is I was um, on some sort of like homeschool legal defense or something, not theirs, but a similar group. And um, I went to a website and there was a lawyer talking and he was saying all this stuff. And I was like, this is important to know. If I was um, like a young mom still, I would like to know this stuff. So I just kind of compiled it and I put a link back to his. And I put a cute picture at the top and I've had several hundred thousand views on wow. just that one website. It keeps coming up. In fact, one lady liked it so much she stole it and put it on her website. Like it was hers. <laughs> and but um, anyway, then I've got um, one, a lot about pregnancy and childbirth. And uh, one is vitamin, um, vitamin K in brief. You know, vitamin K is an injection they like to give babies mm -hmm. at birth. And I, I noticed a lot of controversy about it. And a lot of people were saying this and a lot of people were saying that. I was like, well, let me see. So I, I dug further into it and I listened to a few talks about it. And I collected the information and I linked to other things. And I said, here it is. Mm -hmm. And so I think I just want, I'm a truth seeker. I'm really passionate about the truth. And what I've found is truth can be hard to find because a lot of times people will get confused or some people have a strong bias for one side or the other. And it's really hard to navigate. Mm -hmm. And I don't always claim to have discovered all the truth, but you know, the hardest thing about truth is if you get an idea and you hold it so firmly that you're not willing to question it or to actually say, was I maybe led astray? You have to be willing to hold every bit of information and say, God, I really want to know more about this and I want to explore it. And I'm willing to look at this side and that side mm -hmm. and, and come up. But a lot of times we have information and we don't want yeah. to hear another side. And that to me is a signal of programming. Yeah. If something makes me so angry when somebody questions something mm -hmm. I hold dear and it just makes me angry so I can't consider it, maybe I have been programmed. It's, it's interesting because I've had to unlearn a lot of things that, you know, I just put my blind faith in um, and, you know, in our, in our food sources, um, where it comes from, um, how it's grown or how, or what's processed, you know, um, as I got older and started having my own family and meeting people, um, you know, who had a lifestyle that I admired and, um, I had to think on things like I, I did a lot of observing and, um, realizing that a lot of the things that I was doing was not the best way and what when I thought it was the easiest way it actually wasn't the easiest way because a lot of times shortcuts have repercussions and um, and so I was learning I'm learning how to slow down and um, look into things and I think one of the things that has fascinated me with you um, and with a lot of other people is I'm learning more from people like you because I don't have the patience or the focus to do all the digging. And so I know I am putting faith in particular people, but I'm now learning that the people who I put my faith in provide where they're coming up with their information. And so when I grab onto that bone, I can find out where that bone is. Mm -hmm. And if you can lead me on the path and it makes sense to me, then, then it's super helpful yeah. to I me. I think the character of who you're listening to is also quite important. And that's something that influences me too. Not that I would throw out because even, I think even wicked intent people may have kernels of truth, mm -hmm. but I do appreciate when, when I know there's morality right. backing information. But 
You know, there's a lot of ignorance about what is good for us, but there's also some malevolent or bad intent behind some of the things because there's ways to make money off of people's ignorance. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just didn't realize what a whole world of malevolence and wickedness there is there. But one of the things is funny, in the USA, so I, I, we lived overseas for 30 years, so I was not living in the USA. And when we come back, it's like culture shock to come to my home where I grew up. And one of the things I find is extremely hilarious is especially happens in the ice cream aisle for some reason, I don't know why. And you'll see a sign that says, certain ice cream, certain batch was recalled. And it's like the FDA is there for you. And it's hilarious yeah. because the FDA right. is not there yeah. for you. Yeah. Just look at all the things they approve that are bad for you, but they want to send the message right. that they're on the ball because they yeah. spotted a defective product and they're yeah. telling everyone about it. Yeah, it is. It is crazy. Um, and I, I, you know, everything the FDA approved and, and all those things, again, it was in that mindset that I did find myself in where I blindly trusted agencies um, for my decision making. And now I'm finding that the best person to make decisions for me are myself. And but it's a lot of responsibility. It is a lot of responsibility and um, it's a lifestyle change. And so um, we haven't even scratched the surface about what Becky does. Um, she's, she's, oh my gosh, there's so many layers to this onion, but we need to probably check on the water. I would put it down on low. Okay, I'm gonna go put it down on low. Yeah, that's the uh, garden stock. No, uh-uh. And what's nice is, like, when it's super windy, um, you can dismantle it. So that's where you put herbs? Well, I mean, people will put, um, they'll put strawberries. You can do beans. They have, like, an attachment where... Um, you, it like comes around it and you can, you can do climbing things. So it's quite heavy. It is heavy. And so this is where the water goes. So I usually fill that up. Honey, my dill is, my dill is popping up, um, in the ground. That is hilarious. But yeah, so I've got some marigolds. This is kind of like my salad and herbs. What is this? Those are sunflowers. Is that a bit late? So yes. Um, it they is, still look really strong. Yeah, they have done really, really well. And this was kind of a, an experiment. Technically, when, by, when I planted it, the growing season, I, I should get some sunflowers. And I've got sunflowers over there as well. Um, but sunflowers are really good for the soil. Um, so they add, so they, they're toxin suckers. So oh. if there's anything toxic in the soil, it'll, um, it'll take it out and then it adds. So they're multi-purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's nice to plant them in between things though. Yes. And, um, and I'll oftentimes, yeah, people will put sunflowers, but very little will grow, um, underneath the sunflower. So you kind of have to space it really really well but is that? that is uh crimson clover so i'm doing the charles dar um not charles darling <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i'm doing the um no dig um <clears throat> no dig method charles doubting uh, soil? yeah so this is to build my soil so this will add a punch of nitrogen but it also will help break up the clay so it's called a cover crop so I've got a cover crop going there. And then this, the chickens were destroying my rutabagas and my Napa cabbage. And then we've got carrots. But then I bought some plastic that I'll cover during the winter. And my hope is at least I can keep carrots and rutabaga and cabbage going in here all winter long. So that's that's that goal. So is this? We um, did a cover crop because in the greenhouse I plant I plan on planting in the ground of the greenhouse. So this I did just to really try to be pretty. It was kind of a fun experiment. I, had, I got a lot of free seeds when I planted, when I ordered my seed uh, from the seed catalog. 
and then I put my spice and my spices, my herbs over here. Um, but my basil, we had that early freeze and that stunted a lot of stuff. So it stunted the sunflowers. The sunflowers, I do believe, would have had blooms had it not been for that freeze. You can still see some of the burnt tips. Uh, but my basil just got about got demolished. Um, and then I had zucchini and stuff over there. I had a lot of fall crops that were planted that just were decimated. And then my green beans, I'm letting dry up. So I have dry beans, so I can make a jar of dry beans. And then I've got sh uh, sugar snap peas that are still thriving. Now the sh oh, so, cause these are growing at the botanical garden? Yeah, yeah, it's a cool weather crop. So um, spring and um, spring and fall, typically. Mm. Yeah, this one didn't really make it though through the freeze. But yeah, Benjamin will come out here. Yeah, these are my purple, purple beans. Those are good too, Roth. You want to grab one of those? But but there's only one. I don't want to take. Mm, one. I've got several. It's kind of entwined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're kind of entwined, but I'm letting them dry, so I'll have some dry beans. But I have green and purple beans. But when you cook them, they'll they become speckled. So this needs, um, but I would never cook these. I, oh. I would just eat them. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're so yummy. What is this? This is borage. So borage actually is, um, it's a pollinator. Um, obviously you can see all the action here. Um, it does well in cold weather. You can eat it and you can put it in peas. I mean in peas, in Soup. teas. Um, but I need to learn more about it. I absolutely loved it. I've never seen it, never grown it. Um, but it's a, another good soil and amender. these are not your bees. No, those are carpenter bees. Right. Mm -hmm. Nuts. is loaded. Yeah, so the jalapeno is doing crazy. Now, and that, is that, you have to plant that every year? Or? You don't have to. And I actually just read up how people will take, actually will um, scoop it up and then put it in a pot. And then, you know, cover it. Um, so I can't believe it because we've tried to grow jalapenos oh, on gosh. our balcony. Yeah. At most, we've got one or two ever. And then yeah. <laughs> and so then I leave and this was our uh, okra. And I'm going to leave that because that's natural green matter in the ground. And this is that's green pepper? That was it, actually yellow. My peppers did really funky this year. Um, I think that's actually the orange bell, and then I had a yellow bell, but I picked them when they were green because they just, I just, I need to, I need to learn more about these peppers. Purple? Yeah, those beets? are bull's blood beets. Ah. Yeah. And then I tried to plant some onions over here, and then these onions came up from last year. <laughs> so I've got random onions all are over these the place. Nasturtiums? Yes, so nasturtiums are good companion are you plants. With them? Yes. So Do you know that if you take the tiny little leaf, like this one? I mean, you can eat it. Yeah, but it's great for sore throats. Hmm. Oh, okay. Now, yeast or cold. So if my children were ever, I've got a sore throat, I said, go pick a nasturtium leaf. Yeah, hmm. and eat it. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's awesome. There's a little bit of a bite uh -huh. in the ones that we were used to. Yeah. Yeah, so, so okay. we, in South Africa, they just grow everywhere. Like... Crazy. Well, I love them, yeah, because those little the pods they just drop. We had these in California. My friend Natalie had a bunch at her house, and I had took taken hers before they moved out of town, and so that was how I remembered her. And um, and then I forgot to bring some um, here, and so yeah. Okay, so this actually is is funny. These little arugula. It's arugula now. That's the mystery. I planted a whole tray inside the house and I didn't label it and I forgot what it was. And so I planted it in the ground, not knowing what I was planting and it's just more arugula. So, um, that's mint. I've got, yeah, so that's my mint. And those more, are those the peas? This is the, these are the peas. Yeah. So they still have a lot of growth. But. Yeah, yeah. And again, we had our first freeze was supposed to be this last Saturday, but we had the freeze like three weeks ago. Right when we got back. Yeah. It was like down to 32. Yeah. What? So it, it really stunted a bunch of stuff. But, um, but yeah, so this is... So that's my, that's on my list of things to do for this next coming season. 
um, is to do. Because uh, we did worms in South Africa. Yeah. Um, but there was a guy who was selling like these three layers of plastic uh -huh. crates yeah. that had holes, the in, holes them. in them. Yeah. And I can't remember how the whole system worked. Yeah. I mean, you would get the tea. And yeah. You would get the the cast. So now, now, I just strain it, and okay. then um, you want. Should I get like a pitcher? Yeah. I mean Hey, I wanted to show you what we did with um, the tiger water. And I already got halfway through it. I'm like, oh no, I need to film this. So here you go. All right, so I took the, uh, I took a strainer and I put it over a pitcher. I got actually two pitchers and I poured it through and I strained out the ginger and the jalapeno. And then I poured honey in. It's not really an exact science, but I started pouring honey and I'll do it to taste. And then um, I'm going to put some lemon juice and I don't have fresh lemon, so I'm gonna use this. Now I'm sure fresh is best, but that's what I got. All right. Hey, buddy. Wash and blipping. Yeah, that's your ball, buddy. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's pour some in here. Let's try it out. Oh, it's good. It's 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 a little on the warm side, uh, temperature wise. Um, and so once I chill this, oh, it's very refreshing. It's not too hot, but I like it because you can alter the sweetness and all of that, but oh my gosh, so refreshing. Mm. Yummy.